Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's good to be able to say our channel. Come on. <laughs> um, if you haven't watched our previous video, this channel was just me before and we recently changed it to both of us. Um, so today we're really excited about this topic um, and we're actually going to be kind of putting this in a series form. So we're calling the series The Normal Christian Life a lot of the scripture and ideas that we're going to be discussing um, can be tied back to the book called The Normal Christian Life by Watchman Nee. If you want to read it, it's really incredible. Um, but we're going to be going even beyond that book in this series, and we're going to be touching on a lot of topics relating to what it means to live out a life dedicated um, and following Jesus Christ. So today, the topic of this first video in this series is going to be called Back to Basics, and um, I'm going to hand it over to my husband so we can get started. Hey, hey. <laughs> so I just wanted to start off, we, we both want to start off by just sharing our heart just really quickly. Um, Holy Spirit has been stirring um, within us both about so many different topics to talk about because there is a lot of false representation out there as to what a normal Christian looks like. And it's been breaking my heart, it's been breaking Britt's heart, because you see the amount of division here. You see the amount of division that exists within this country. And it's due to all sorts of things. But I truly believe that God continues to tell us that it's because His children, those that have given their life to Jesus, are lacking in knowledge. Now, where does that knowledge come from? We're going to be talking a lot, a lot of stuff, but Britt and I really, when we've tried to film other things, we realize that it's so deep, all of the things, all of the different topics, all of the different meanings, all the different struggles. So we want to start, like Britt said, with the basics. First and foremost, guys, the Holy Bible, our Bible, you have to believe with absolute certainty that it, it is unadulterated, it is not tainted by outside sources, that it's the absolute and final word of God. It is truth. Again, we've come to begin to define, humans are very quick to define what is logical and wise in the world and say, and then they try, and you've heard it probably from some of your close friends, maybe from other people in the media. They try and say, okay, then you take a worldly idea or a concept and you try to apply it to Christianity. First and foremost, guys, let's look at at the reality of the situation. The reality is that Jesus was killed for what he was touting as truth, which we know to be true because we believe wholeheartedly in what the scripture says. The apostles and the disciples, they were all killed because they were going against in the very fabric of what the world says is correct, of, of the world's morality, of the world's concept of right and wrong. So what we're doing, and I really feel God continuing to say this, is that we're going to make this particular video again, stressing the importance of being in line and aligned with the Word of God. Yeah. Now, first and foremost, as, as we talk about here, is, is the fact that you have to believe in the absolute finality of the Word. And you can't pick and choose what aspects of the Bible that you're going to follow. It's going to create division within your life. And the devil is called, again, a deceiver. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and separate even you from the Lord. So he's going to come in and provide doubt. The moment that doubt comes in in regards to truth, God has challenged me so many times. He says, is my word true or not? Are my promises true or not? When I begin to doubt his word, the Holy Bible, when I begin to doubt it, if, if that doubt has created many difficulties within my life before I came back to Christ, when I was just half in, half out in the world. If you've heard my testimony, from zero to 18, I lived half in, half out, half in the church, half in the world. It creates a lot of division, and the Bible actually in the book of James talks about, and Jesus talks about what happens when a house is divided. It cannot stand. In James, it says that an individual that is trying to be half in the world and half with God is going to be tossed and fro by the difficulties of life. And I wanted to add, 
your faith will be tested. Yes. There will be times where you have questions, when you don't understand. But that doesn't mean that you just throw your faith away, that you that you just stop believing in God. You you persist in your faith and you lean into God and mm -hmm. you pray and you ask him questions and you seek out answers. It's not yes. a matter, it's not, there's not something wrong with you because your faith is being tested. There's not something wrong with you because the enemy's warring against you and trying to make you doubt and throw thoughts in your mind. I've come to find out that in fact, some of those thoughts aren't my thoughts, but in fact, it's the enemy trying to come against my faith in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And we're going to go into more as to what Britt's actually talking about, again, in other series, as far as what, it, what she means when she says that her thoughts are not her thoughts. It's yeah. incredible what the Lord continues to reveal to us. But what Britt says is that, what well, if you need wisdom, now this is what Britt is saying, and again, this is why, because... When we read the scripture, it's not about possessing head knowledge, guys. When you go into the secret place, we're going to talk about all this in this video. When you go into the secret place, as Jesus describes it, you're going in to develop an intimacy with the Lord, which is why Jesus died. He broke down the barrier. He ripped the veil so that we could walk in the cool of the garden as Adam and Eve did with the Father, reestablishing. His death reestablished this intimacy. And through delving and being immersed within his holy word, we're going to tell you why that's important. But reaffirming what Britt said in scripture, it appears in James 1 through 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. Like Britt says, do not believe the lie of Satan that says that if you have questions and you don't understand something, then there must be something wrong with you or wrong with the word. Absolutely not. Even some of the, <laughs> there's one of my favorite references in the New Testament there, there is a writer that actually refers to Paul in the writings of Paul and says, I know that our brother Paul is difficult to understand. And, I, and that's hilarious because we're talking about some of the earliest church looking at one of, the, one of the forefathers of Christianity who spread Christianity across Asia Minor, one of the greatest minds of Christianity. Indeed, there is depth to understanding, but that's what's beautiful here God is that is so God is so big. There yeah. are so many things that we won't understand until we get to heaven, and that's okay. It's okay to not have answers for every single thing. But the the foundation that we're trying to really lay here is that the word of God is the ultimate authority in our lives. And, Has to be. And and we have to remain unwavering in that as a basic piece of foundation in our lives as Christ followers. Yes, yes. And to finish this off, he says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Again, if you're feeling condemnation, it's not from God. It's not. The Lord is enticing you. He wants you to wrestle with him. He wants you to ask these questions. He wants to develop that rapport. Yeah. And I promise you that he will respond. And he says, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. That's James 1, verses 5 through 8. Again, we talked about why it's important to have an absolute foundation being the word of God. I am undivided. I am not in doubt that this is the unadulterated, pure, inspired word of God. I have to be, that has, we have to start guys with that as our foundation. Otherwise, as it says in scripture, we're going to be divided between, as it says in, in scripture as well, there's a way that seemeth right to a man and it leads to death. So there's a logical worldview that we have been taught by the wrong teachers growing up. We've been instructed by the wrong professors. And there's an analytical and there's a wise, wise way of the world. But then there's God's truth. There's man's truth and there's God's truth. We, you should not try and take what you think to be true outside of the Lord and apply it to the Word of God. You stand by the Word of God and there are some things that may not make sense, but then you begin to delve deeper with the Lord. Do not be off term, but continue to seek Him out. Yeah. So, first and foremost, having an established foundation rooted firmly in the Holy Bible is an absolute necessity. If you wish to even experience some of the blessings, which you hear a lot of pastors talking about, but 
in times of turmoil, where are you going to turn? Yeah. The Bible is such a support system. It is not an antiquated, outdated piece of literature. If you understand when someone says it's the inspired word of God, then you have to understand what it means. That means that Holy Spirit literally is writing. It's not man putting on his own ideas in his own because of the fact that when you have an understanding of the character of God, as you read the Bible, you begin to understand the character of God. And then things begin to fall into place. What does that mean? You hear oftentimes in the normal Christian life in sermons, we must have the fear of God. Having the fear of God is simply understanding the character of God. And again, if you understand the character, then you begin to understand other aspects. The Bible comes alive when you begin to understand who our Father is. And when you begin to understand who our Father is and believe that He truly made you and crafted you, as it says in Psalms, in our mother's womb, then you begin to understand yourself. And Britt, I know that you have something to talk about, about not adding or subtracting from the Word of God. So I'm going to read a verse. Uh, Revelation 22, 19 says, And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. We've seen so many false teachings, so many people picking and choosing what they want to um, apply to their lives and then what they don't. But even in the scripture, it says we don't get to pick and choose. We are to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. We, we are not our own God, and that's what you're getting into when you start to dictate what you're going to listen to in the word of God and what you're not going to listen to, because then you become your own God in that situation. And, and the Lord gave me this whenever I was praying over the scripture and this topic. I just thought in my head, like, wow, people will claim to be vegan or claim to be, be vegetarian, and that's like a lifestyle based on what you consume in your food. So people don't go around claiming to be vegetarian and then they eat meat. So why is it okay for people in the church and Christians to claim to follow Christ, but they don't actually live out the Word of God or apply the Word of God in their lives. And that's what's really crazy, guys, it is if you think about this, that Jesus died for a relationship. He, 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 he died on the cross 2,000 years ago so that he could reestablish the relationship between God and man, between himself and us. Now, I'm thinking here, and so many people have such a casual approach to this relationship with yeah. God. It's so casual. So like she talked about, you wouldn't hear anyone claim to be a vegan if they're not actually following it. I mean, there might be some occasional individual that just wants to you know, have the claim to fame, doesn't really truly follow, but that wouldn't be on average. Mm -hmm. But on average, it's breaking our hearts. And that's what Holy Spirit continues to pour into us and says, is having us call out as, as voices in the wilderness and saying, my people who love me, who call upon my name, where are you? Why are you not fulfilling the very basics? The very basics. I desire for you to be in the mountain ascending with me and you're still roaming around the base of the mountain for 40 years wondering why you're experiencing so sorrow. Good. Wondering why you're experiencing so grief. Good. Wondering where God is in the midst of this. And yet, if you only knew the promises that the Father has for you, written in His Holy Word, if you only took the time to seek Him out in His Holy Word, then you would understand what He's promised for you and what He guarantees will happen in these situations. Rather than you turning to psychologists, rather than you turning to your friends and just sitting and moaning and sitting around saying, Oh, woe is me. God is so desperate. For you, you say you... You claim my name, but you don't come to me when I'm so desperate to give you the wisdom that you are seeking out, that I'm so desperate to give you the way out. I'm so hungry to provide you with an alleyway that you can't see with your normal, natural eyes that God will give you. It says that the Spirit will provide you the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit is the source of all wisdom. If we seek Him out in His Holy Word and through prayer and fasting, then you will be given insight that only God the Father can provide to you. 
That's when it comes down to really laying down our life, to humbling ourselves before God. When you come back to Christ, it's no longer about you. Jesus says, if you wish to follow me, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. He is our guide. Paul says that regardless of everything, one of my favorite verses, he says that everything that he's learned, he did everything according to Mosaic law. He was the top of his class as a Pharisee. It was all garbage in knowing Jesus. Yeah. How do we know Jesus? Through prayer and through reading the word. If you're not familiar with, the, and I, again, I'm holding up my phone because my Bible app is on this. This is not the holy word. <laughs> it's contained within this, okay? It's contained within her. It's contained within me. The more that we read the word, the more that we become it, God. Yeah. Guys, it's not, it's not a head knowledge. It becomes a heart knowledge. It saturates us. It defines who we are because the word reveals who we are. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good, God. The, the word reveals who we are. The, the world has defined us. We've taken parts of the world and we said, well, this is who I am. And the world says I'm this and the world yeah. says I'm that. And this person relates with me and they understand me and they, they share my personality traits. And God is so desperate for you to know how he sees you, how he created you, as it says in Ephesians, before the beginning of time, he created you for good works. Every single person that ever has been or ever will be, Christ died for you, and he has a unique plan and purpose for you that you can only find out through prayer and fasting and through sitting and saturating yourself in the word of God. Yeah. <sighs> Do you have anything that, I have? As you can see, we're very <laughs> passionate about this and a lot of other things, and it's mm. because it's because of God. It's because of Him in us. It's because of what He's speaking to us and what He's revealing to us. And and it's really a, it's really this is not coming from a place of condemnation. We've struggled with the very things that we're speaking of, but yes. the Lord's brought us out of a lot of this stuff and and taken us to new levels and he's still working in our lives yes, but we are day. not going to sit here and not share what the lord is doing because people need freedom people need jesus christ That's in right. their lives the world needs jesus christ more than ever the answer and, is jesus and and his love covers a multitude of sins that's right and how do you come to know him again going back to the word. It's not us saying this, guys. Listen to Jesus speaking, Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. If we're calling upon our Heavenly Father, and His word is true, and what's contained within the scripture is true, Jesus says to keep asking, with a repentant heart, with a humble heart. Ask the Father and you shall, it shall be done. Here's the problem is that we don't understand the word. We don't know the word. It says in Hosea that my people, God's talking, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. We have so many different theologies, so many people espousing their own opinions. It's not rooted in scripture. It's not true. They're taking one scripture and making an entire theology out of it. You have to read scripture in context from front to back. And when you do that, you understand the character of God. You understand who you are. And then you begin in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of triumph, in the midst of turmoil, you begin to hinge on the promises. The promises become a part of you. When Paul and other of the New Testament writers say that you must experience, that you can take joy in great suffering, that itself is a contradiction to what the world says. Because the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, Jesus came to turn things upside down to really establish a new world order of being totally reliant not on the self, not on what I think is right, not on what man thinks is right, what my mom thinks is right, my dad thinks is right, society thinks is right, but what, I'm, what God thinks is right. He came to establish a new world order. So when I'm experiencing joy in the midst of great suffering, I know the truths that are contained within the word of God that says that God is in control, that says that nothing passes through the hands of the Father that he does not want, that he does not want it to. That, and if you start to read his scripture, it becomes alive. It's a living and active word. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what the scripture says. It says here, in Hebrews 4, 12 through 13, For the word of God is alive and powerful. What Brit says, 
that we once were struggling with these things because we weren't reading the word. And then when we begin, when God began to beckon to us and call us and say, I want you, I want you to have a deeper relationship with me. And one of the steps to doing that is by going after me in my word and saying, Holy Spirit, before I read this word, reveal to me what you want. It's a living and an active word, God. Guys, this is what God is saying. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cut in between soul and spirit, guys. He's saying it's, it penetrates the deepest part of us. Between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. There's so much in the, this message, and we could talk about this verse alone for hours. But I want to talk about the fact that it says that his word is alive and active. It penetrates. It changes us, guys. If you're out there and you're desperate for change, if you're out there and you're saying, where are you, God? I don't understand. You, you have to first understand the promises. There's one of Brit's famous promises that's contained within the word of God that we go to time and time again, and we don't focus on what the devil wants us to. He wants to distract us from the truth. He wants us to bring doubt and condemnation. He wants to tell us that there's no way out, that suffering is inevitable. And Jesus said there will be suffering in this life. But he promises he follows something up with that. And that's incredible because he, he, he gives a promise of life because he says, again, I came to give you life and life abundantly. How do we balance those two things? You have to know the word. Yeah. If you just hear someone say, well, Jesus said there's going to be suffering. And you're like, oh, well, I guess this is it. No, Jesus says you don't have to stay there. That I came, I came to give you life and life abundantly. You don't have to just stay in the suffering. That you can have joy in the midst of it. That's what Paul says. That's what the New Testament writers are saying. Why? Because if you know that he's in control, and if you know that his promises are true, and that he's unchanging, he's a rock that does not change, he's unchanging, from beginning to end, he never changes. His word doesn't change, guys. So don't let people tell you that we've come into a new age of Christ and that those laws are no longer applicable. His word is everlasting. That means he himself is a God of infinity. His word is everlasting. It's never changing. So we hold on and we can actually experience joy because we know that joy comes in the morning and God is going to give us a way out of this particular or it's creating something within us. This suffering is why we're experiencing joy because we know that God is going to turn all things together for good. And where do we know that from? <laughs> the Bible. Um, so I do have a life verse I want to share with you guys. As you, whether you are, you don't have a relationship with God, whether you just started a relationship with God or you've had a relationship with God for a while, it's so important to have verses in your life to turn to whenever you're struggling with whatever it is, with doubt, with fear, anything, there are going to be verses that the Lord is going to reveal and show you that you are going to be able to lean on in those times. And one of those for me is Jeremiah 29, 11. Yes. And it's a, it's well known. A lot of people, it, this is a life verse for a lot of people, but I'm going to read it right now. So it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So that was 11, verse 11 yes. through 13. Yes. That is such a powerful few verses and it's something that I really turn to in in seasons where I'm we're experiencing trials because at the end of the day is his word true or not that's right you are have to we, ask yourself that. are we going to look to the physical and what we're seeing with our physical eyes or are we going to trust in the Lord no matter what because I can tell you right now there have been trials after trials where I have done it the wrong way and then there have been trials once I came to Christ where I've been able to lean into him and I can tell you right now trials without him life without him is so incredibly much harder difficult. and difficult than whenever I have Jesus with me because I know he is for me and I know who I am in him. Right. And I have authority through Christ Jesus. What she's so saying are all promises. 
whenever you're going through stuff, you lean on his promises because they are true. And truth doesn't change. It's true. There's only one truth. And, and, and that's another thing. There is only one truth. There's the knowledge of man, but God, God's truth will stand. And every knee shall bow. That's Before another him. verse. <laughs> it's a part of us, guys. Everything she's saying are scriptures. How does she know these things? Because she's actively immersing herself within the Word of God every single day and filleting her heart before the Lord in a sense of humility, saying, God, the only wisdom comes from you. The only way out comes from you. And when I said, how do I know that all things turn together for good? Romans 8.28 and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. One of the verses that Britt had mentioned to us before we, before we even threw this video together, before we even thought about it, prayed about it, was that Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And now you're seeing why it's important to go through the Bible, not just one verse and write a theology. You take Romans 8.28 with what Jesus said, and then it all comes into fruition. Then it all makes, start, starts to make sense. It's not just a bunch of ancient stories. The entire Old Testament was all eyes were fixed on Jesus, forerunners, people were prophesying about God. It's all God's entire plan. And it says this in the New Testament. God created the world knowing with everything pointing towards his son Jesus. Yeah. It, it, was, it was from the beginning of time that God was going to show the ultimate demonstration of his love, how much we mean to him by sacrificing his only son, that Jesus would descend from glory, guys, sit in a womb of, of a woman for nine months. We're talking about the son of God, God himself, would leave heaven, leave the promises, would literally leave beautiful infinity, eternity, paradise, nothing better, and would descend into a world that had been cursed because of the choice of Adam and Eve, because of his love for us, and would sit nine months, the Son of God, sitting in a, in a woman's womb, waiting to be born, because he was so desperate for us to know him, guys. It was so desperate. In Jesus, when he was on the earth, he laid these foundation stones. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. He's referring to his own word. It is said in the very opening lines of the Gospel of John. It's that it was the word, that Jesus was the word made flesh. That when we're reading the Holy Scripture, guys, it's Jesus that we're reading. He's the one who's communing with you. He's the one who's penetrating to the deepest part of your soul. Holy Spirit is guiding. Remember, it's three in one. It's God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. You can't take them apart. They're three in one. That's the magnificent mystery, something I can't wrap my head around, but it doesn't change that I know the truth. And I hang my hat every single day on the word of God. And I do not try and take things from outside and make it my gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus. Jesus gave us very basic guidelines to follow, guys. And that's what you hear us throughout these. We'll always go back to what Jesus says. Jesus had a basic expectation for those that love him and those that follow him. And it's contained here in Matthew. Jesus says, when you fast. Now you have to think about this. If you truly believe that Jesus was who he says he was, and he knew that thousands of years later, there'd be millions of books taking apart every apostrophe, every word, every syllable of him. Do you think that he made a mistake when he spoke? Everything God does. How do I know this? Everything God does is purposeful. Why? Because it's contained within the Bible. Therefore, when Jesus spoke, he didn't speak too much or speak too little. Everything he said had purpose and meaning. And that is what you'll hear is the foundation of our belief because it's contained within the truth. It's contained within the word of God. In Matthew 6, verse 16, it says, when you fast, there was an expectation that Jesus said, when you fast, fast is a part of the normal everyday Christian life, okay? It is. It's what Jesus says. It's not what David says. I'm not religious and pious because I'm saying, well, I have to fast. Well, it's Jesus telling me what I need to do. And do I trust God? Is he the son of God or not? Did he come to set the world right or not? Or is it just a suggestion? Because if it was, he would say, well, you get a fast occasionally, guys, but don't worry about it. I think he also would have clarified a lot of the other hypocrisy that you're hearing in a lot of the other... A uh, word that goes against a lot of the other opinions that are being espoused and saying that they're Christian, but they don't line up with the word. And again, 
God, oh Lord, help us, Lord, help us, because we are not, we are not rooted in the foundation of the Word of God, and therefore we're being led astray. Sheep, come back to the Father, come back to His Word, come back to what He's calling out to you. He's saying, come back to the truth, and the truth is contained here. And the last thing that we'll say to wrap this up is that in Luke 11, verse 2, Jesus says, when you pray, it's another expectation that he has. It's a basic expectation. He's not even going into why. He's saying it's obvious. That's how you communicate with me. When you pray, when you fast, guys, these are things that we need to start incorporating into our everyday life. And we're going to go into practical applications as to what fasting looks like, what prayer looks like, how it changed our life, why it's important. But again, this video is about the Word of God and how we have to begin to seek out the Father and His character. Jesus, in that very same, in those very same Gospels, He says, He tells us how to pray. He says to go to the secret place and seek out your Father. Yeah. Go to the secret place. And we're going to begin to expand on what the secret place looks like. But I'm encouraging you, start by reading the Word and pray before you read. Because I can tell you, I've read this Bible I've read many chapters. I've read many verses over and over again. And then the Lord has brought me back. And he's brought Brit back. And he says, I want you to read this verse. Lord, I already know this verse. He says, I want to show you something different. The word, because it's alive and because it's active, a same verse that you've read, which is applicable to one aspect of your life, one area, one struggle, can somehow take on completely different meaning. Because our Lord is multifaceted. His word is so rich and it has so much depth and it becomes alive and active and it can literally transform your day to day if you only choose to saturate yourself and seek him out and believe without a question, ask for greater faith, ask for greater belief, guys. If you're experiencing the doubt, say, God, I want to trust you. I want to know you. I want to believe everything that this says, but it doesn't make sense. These things don't make sense to me. Show me Help me make sense of this and watch Holy Spirit show up in your life when you have a genuine heart of humility and you're seeking Him out. Jesus says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Remember the promises, guys. Don't look to the left or the right. Keep your eyes fixed on the Father. Keep your eyes fixed on the Word. Know it to be true and live it. Become it. That's the promise we have. We, we titled this Back to Basics because this is such a foundational thing in our lives as Christ followers, and it's something that gets is so easily overlooked. And again, this is not, we're not sharing this to condemn anyone. This, this is being shared in truth and in love to inspire yes. you to build your foundation and your relationship with Christ, to really press in and read the Word of yes. God regularly, to spend time in prayer. And again, he already said we are going to be breaking these videos up into other topics and really diving deeper into obedience and living out the Word of God in your life and prayer and fasting. So we're going to continue on with these videos in this series, but we really wanted to start with the, with that basic understanding of reading the word and how important and, and critical yes. it is in our lives. Um, it's a so, necessity, guys. It's not something that you can just say, oh, I, pro I don't need it. The word says you do, and we're telling you through Holy Spirit, he's saying it has been absolutely essential in our lives, and it's absolutely essential for you growing in your understanding and experience the love and the promises of the Father. One of my favorite verses, and this is how I love us to end, it talks about going back to our first love. When you first, I want you to imagine, if you haven't given your life to Christ, we'll talk to you in a separate video, but those that have given their lives to Christ, remember the pit from which he plucked you out of. God has been continually saying to both Britain, I tell my people that I'm desperate for more of them. I'm so hungry for them to come back to their first love. Forget the religion. I want the relationship. That's what God's beckoning to you. He's calling to you right now. If you're listening to this video, there's no coincidence here. God is orchestrating this. He wants you to come back to him. He's desperate for more of you. Children, come back to your father. Come back to him. Return to your first love. And you'll learn about his love. His unconditional, unfailing love in every 
both Old Testament and New. They all show the love and the mercy of our Father, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching. My husband gets very passionate. Come on. I do too. I just sometimes express it a little bit differently. Yes. But we're just so we're so happy to be filming together to to be sharing what's on our hearts with you guys. We really hope that this video encouraged you and inspired you to press into the Lord even harder. He shows up every time. And you know what? You might feel awkward at the beginning. You might feel like you have no idea what you're doing and that's okay. Sometimes we just have to take that leap of faith and just jump and okay. you learn by doing. You don't, you, there's only so much preparatory work that you can do. You just gotta do it. So we just wanted to encourage you guys. Um, thank you so much again for watching. Do you want to add anything? And I want you all to know and be aware that we are not fighting, this again is a scripture, against flesh and blood, against, against spirits and the principalities of darkness. Guys, the devil does not want you to watch this video. He does not want you to open up, crack open that dusty Bible that might have been sitting, might have been provided by your mother or your grandmother. He's desperate for you not to have intimacy. He doesn't care that you go to church. He doesn't care that you're worshiping. Yep. He doesn't care about your small group. He is so radically desperate for you not to understand who Christ is in you, who he's made you for, and for you to have the intimacy that Christ died for. That was the ultimate, guys. That's why he came. It's not only about going to heaven. It's about being completely transformed and born again. The devil is desperate for you not to open that Bible and experience that intimacy. And so it will be difficult in the beginning. But continue to press on. Open up the Gospels. Learn about Jesus. That would be in terms of my recommendation. <laughs> Start there. Start there. Be aware. Be aware, guys. Yeah. Be aware. We love you both. We love you all. We love everyone. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.